small intestinal motility. The main function of the small intestine is to digest and absorb the nutrients. Okay. Besides that, after there is proper absorption of proper digestion and absorption of the nutrients, the small intestine propels chyme along the intestine. Okay. Small intestine propels the chyme along the intestine. Okay. So during this motility process, the small intestine, it properly mix the chyme with the enzymes and the secretion from the pancreas and gallbladder. And during this time, the small intestine, it helps in mixing of the food particles as well as it helps in propelling the food particles into the large intestine. Right? It helps in propelling the food particles in the large intestine. So, we have already talked about the generation of motility. You know, we have already talked about that. So, this motility, it is generated by the pacemaker cell of the pacemaker cell of the smooth muscles or the intestine. Right? So, these pacemaker cells are the interstitial cells of Kajal. You know, we have talked about that. So, pacemaker cells of the uh, GI system is the interstitial cells of the Kajal. So, these interstitial cells of the Kajal, they generate interstitial cells of the Kajal generates the basic electrical rhythm. Right? Generates basic electrical rhythm. So, that basic electrical rhythm, after generation of basic electrical rhythm, the action potential is generated and there is motility. Right? And there is motility. So, this basic electrical rhythm, the frequency of the uh, basic electrical rhythm, it is different in different segments of the intestine. You know, it is different in different segments of the intestine. Right? It is about 12 waves per minute. Okay, this frequency occurs at about 12 waves per minute. And this basic electrical rhythm is the slow waves. Right? We have talked in the first class also, we have talked while uh, talking about the gastric motility also, and we will we will talk here also, right? We'll talk here also in the intestinal motility. So this basic electrical rhythm, it is basically the slow wave, okay? It is rhythmical fluctuation of the slow wave, which occurs from minus 65 to minus 45 millivolt, okay? Minus 65 to minus 45 millivolt. And this slow waves, it is generated by influx of the sodium and efflux of the potassium. Right? Sodium, right? So this is the slow wave. So when these slow waves, they reach the threshold potential. Okay, this is the threshold potentials. So when these slow waves reach the threshold potential, then there is the spike potential, and this spike potential leads to contraction of the muscle. Okay, longitudinal and circular muscle. Right? Contraction of the longitudinal and circular muscles. So this is spike potential, it is due to the influx of calcium ion. Right? The spike potential is due to the influx of the calcium ion. Right? And these spike potential, it may vary. It may occur one or it may occur 10, one to 10. Right? The frequency of the spike potential, it varies. Right? Frequency of the spike potential varies. It may occur one spike, there may be one spike, and there may be more spikes, okay, one to 10 spikes per minute, right, per second, right? one to 10 spikes per second, it may occur, or there, is, there may not be any spike, okay, there may be spike, or there may not be any spike, any spike, right, and the frequency of the spike potential determines the strength of contraction of the muscle, okay, frequency of the spike potential determines the contractility of the muscle. If there is less spike potential, then there is less contraction, okay? And if there is more spike potential, then the contraction is more, right? So if there is less spike potential, then contraction is less. If there is more con spike potential, then contraction is more. Or if there is no spike potential, then smooth muscle will not contract, okay? Longitudinal and circular smooth muscle will not contract. Okay. So this is the 
स्लो वेव पोटेंशियल और बेसिक इलेक्ट्रिकल रिदम है बेसिक इलेक्ट्रिकल रिदम इट इज frequently asked question so i am repeating it many times hey i have repeated it three or four times so this is the basic electrical rhythm basic electrical rhythm is the slow fluctuation of the membrane potential okay the smooth muscles they have not the same resting membrane potential they have the fluctuating resting membrane potential which fluctuates between the minus 65 to minus 45 millivolt minus 65 to minus 45 millivolt and whenever there is any neuronal stimulation or any hormonal stimulation or any mechanical stimulation okay whenever there is neuronal stimulation hormonal stimulation or mechanical stimulation these slow waves they reach the threshold potential and when threshold is reached there is the spike potential spike potential is due to the influx of calcium ion okay slow waves is due to the influx of sodium ion slow wave is due to the influx of sodium ion and and the it is due to the influx of the calcium ion okay spike is due to calcium ion slow wave is due to slow wave is due to sodium ion okay slow wave is due to sodium ion and this is the slow undulating fluctuation of the membrane potential okay i right? first word we have to write this whenever there is basic electrical rhythm slow undulating fluctuation of the membrane potential which occurs from minus 65 to minus 45 millivolt the slow wave is due to the influx of the sodium ion spike potential is due to the calcium ion the frequent the number the frequency of the spike potential it varies from 1 to 10 frequency of the spike potential determines the contraction of the determines the contraction of the muscle okay contraction of the smooth muscle right if you write this much only then you will get at least 80 to 90% marks and you have while explaining this you have to draw this figure okay you have to draw this figure if you explain with the diagram then you will get more than 90% marks right okay? so explain with the figure try to explain with the figure so uh, so when basic electrical rhythm is generated then only peristaltic waves and segmentation contraction and migrating motor complex they are generated in the small intestine okay because this is the pacemaker cell right basic electrical rhythm is the pacemaker i once basic electrical rhythm is generated then only motility in the small intestine occurs if basic electrical rhythm is not generated okay then there is no motility of the no motility of the um, intestine i like in the um, heart if sa node is not able to fire sa node is not generating its action potential then what will happen the heart will stop for certain time i know heart will stop for certain time that that syndrome what is that syndrome can you remember 5 to 10 seconds or 15 seconds the heart it is stop beating when there is when the sa node is not able to generate the impulse can you remember vir sisa ke wala hey so that is the stocks adam syndrome stocks adam syndrome Right. Likewise, if this is not generated, right? if uh, basic electrical rhythm is not generated, then there is no peristaltic movement. Okay, there is no peristaltic movement. Right? There are some disease condition, some disease condition that is the uh, aganglionic megacolon. Okay, in the aganglionic megacolon. there are no ganglionic cells there are no basic electrical rhythm generated so the stool it is accumulated in the colon right that is also known as esprong's disease a ganglionic megacolon or esprong's disease so in that condition there is the accumulation of the fecal material in the colon due to the absence absence of the mitotic plexus and due to the absence of this basic electrical rhythm there is no peristaltic movement there is no mass movement okay there is no mass movement in the large intestine due to which the fecal materials they accumulate in the uh, accumulate in the colon right so <clears throat> that is all about the basic electrical rhythm so in the intestine after generation of the basic electrical rhythm motility occurs so mainly three type of motility are seen in the small intestine 
Right? Three type of motility. Right? Three type of motility are seen in the small intestine. One is the segmentation contraction. Right? One is the segmentation contraction. Second is the peristaltic contraction. Contraction and third is the migrating motor complex. Right? MMC. Right? Segmentation contraction. Then peristaltic contraction. Then migrating motor complex. Right? Segmentation, peristalsis, and migrating motor complex. So first let's talk about the segmental segmental contraction. So segmentation contraction or segmental contraction, it helps in mixing the intestinal contents. Okay. So it helps in mixing the intestinal contents. So let's suppose, uh, I will show it in the figure later on. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, in the segmentation contraction, the section of the small intestine contracts. Okay. And Let's suppose this is the small intestine. So the segment of the small intestine contracts and other part is relaxed. Okay. So here where the segment of the intestine contracts. So here the uh, circular muscle is contracting here. Whereas the longitudinal muscle present in towards the chine, it gets relaxed. Okay. At, uh, at the point where contraction occurs at the point where contraction occurs, there is the contraction of the circular smooth muscle, whereas where there is dilatation, there is the relaxation of the relaxation of the longitudinal smooth muscle. As we all know that contraction of the circular smooth muscle decreases the diameter, whereas relaxation of the um, longitudinal muscle, it causes increase in length. Okay, when there is contraction or relaxation of the circular muscle, there is either contraction, there is either decrease in diameter or increase in diameter. Okay, there is either decrease in diameter or increase in diameter. But when the longitudinal muscle is contracting, there is either decrease in length or there is either increase in length. Right. So this segmentation contraction it occurs at the max uh, many places okay it occurs at the many places and it helps in propelling the food content back and forward okay it helps in um, propelling the stomach con uh, intestinal content back and forth okay it helps in spreading the chyme back and forth right so main function of this is to mix the chime with the intestinal contents. Okay, main function of the segmentation contraction is to mix chime with the intestinal contents. Okay, main function of the segmentation contraction is to mix chime with the intestinal contents. Okay, am I clear? Right. So look at this. Right. So the area where first contraction occurs that become that becomes relaxed in the next time. Right? Right? Once this area is contracted, in next cycle it becomes relaxed. Okay, this area becomes contracted. Right? This area is contracting now. Right? This area is relaxing. Look at the third time. It is contracting. It is relaxing. Okay, so in this way it is causing mixing of the chyme with the intestinal contents. Okay, so it lasts for a fraction of seconds. Right? And this contraction lasts for fraction of seconds. This contraction lasts for fraction of seconds. Okay. So this is again the same figure. Right? So there, there is the presence of the chime here. There is the contraction of the circular smooth muscle. There is the relaxation of the longitudinal smooth muscle at the adjacent side. And the chime is, chime is propelled back and forward. Okay, back and forward. And there is the alternate segment of contraction and relaxation. Okay, and there is the uh, contraction occurs for the fraction of second. And this contraction doesn't help in propelling the intestinal content. Okay, there is no net forward movement of the chime. It is just for mixing the intestinal contents with the chime. Right? So that the digestive enzymes, they can digest the nutrients okay they can digest the nutrients and increase this absorptive uh, increase the absorption okay so sometimes they are regularly spaced 
Okay, this type of contraction, sometimes they are regularly spaced, sometimes they are isolated, and sometimes they are irregularly spaced. Okay? Sometimes they are regularly spaced, sometimes they are isolated, and sometimes they are irregularly spaced. Okay? So this is also the same. I know. So look at this figure. This area is now contracted. In next cycle, it becomes dilated. Okay, relax. In next cycle, it becomes again contracted. Okay. So in this way, it helps in mixing the intestinal content with the secretion. And it helps in mixing the intestinal content with the secretion. So the segmentation contraction, it chops the single time two or three times per minute. Okay. It chops the time two or three times per minute. And it in this way, it helps in progressive mixing of the food with the secretion of the small intestine. Okay. So this is also the same. So this area, it is dilated. Now it is somewhat contracted. It is contracted. Again, it is dilated. Okay. So in this way, it causes mixing of the food. Second one is the peristaltic contraction. And the second one is the peristaltic contraction. So peristaltic contraction, they are highly coordinated and they propel time through the intestine towards the large intestine. Okay. So after digestion and absorption has occurred, after segmentation contraction have occurred, then peristaltic contraction occurs. Okay. After digestion and absorption occurs, after seg segmental contraction, peristaltic contraction occurs. And this peristaltic contraction, it helps in propelling the chyme from oral to aboral side. Okay. Oral to aboral side. Right? It helps in propelling the chyme from oral to aboral side weak connection you can tell that here yeah. but you usko acne connection weak hola right hai na so this peristaltic contraction it helps in propelling this intestinal content towards the large intestine okay so the contraction is just behind the bolus or behind the chine okay there is a contractile ring behind the bolus or behind the chine and there is the relaxation several centimeters in the forward direction. Okay. There is the relaxation several centimeters in the forward direction. So the speed of the peristalsis, it is five meter per second. Okay. Speed of the peristalsis, it is five meter per second. And the velocity is 0 0.5 to 0 2 centimeter per second. Okay. It is faster in the proximal intestine. Okay. It is faster in the proximal intestine. And it is slower in the uh, terminal intestine. Okay, so uh, it takes about three to five hours to for the time to reach into the ileocecal valve from the pylorus to the ileocecal valve. Okay, so there is the this is the bolus. This is the segment of the small intestine. So there is the contraction of the um, intestine just behind the bolus, and there is relaxation in the forward direction, okay? And generally, this peristaltic wave dies towards the oral side, okay? Right? This is the law of the gut. The law of the gut, it was proposed by the William Jacobs, okay, William Jacobs. So he explained that the peristaltic waves of contraction, they move from the oral to aboral side, and it generally dies towards the oral side, okay? It generally dies towards the oral side, right? So this contraction behind the bolus, it is due to the, what? It, the contraction behind the bolus, it is due to the release of acetylcholine and substance P, acetylcholine and substance P. Relaxation in the forward direction, it is due to the vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and nitric oxide, okay? Relaxation is due to passive intestinal polypeptide and nitric oxide. So this is the peristaltic uh, contraction which occurs in the forward movement, forward direction. So there is the contraction behind the bolus and relaxation in the forward direction. So once the bolus of the food reach to the relaxed area, then in that area, there is again contractile ring. So this contraction is of the circular smooth muscle. Relaxation is of the longitudinal smooth muscle. Relaxation is done by the longitudinal smooth muscle. So you can see here, right, in this figure. So whenever there is any stretch 
or mechanical stimulation, then there is that stretch will uh, uh, cause the release of the serotonin. When serotonin is released, serotonin it stimulates the retrograde neurons. These are the retrograde neurons and anterograde neurons. Okay, retrograde neurons. These are the retrograde neurons and these are the anterograde neurons. So whenever retrograde neurons are activated, retrograde neurons causes the contraction of the circular muscle just behind the bolus and relaxation of the circular muscle. Okay, relaxation of the circular muscle in the forward direction and contraction of the longitudinal muscle. Right? So the foot passes from the oral side to aberral side. Okay, this contraction behind the bolus, it is due to the acetylcholine and substance P, whereas the relaxation in the forward direction, it is produced due to the, it is produced due to the vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and nitric oxide. Okay, vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and nitric oxide. Then there is gastropolic reflex, or gastroileal reflex. Gastropolic reflex is also there, which is seen in the uh, children's. Right? So, gastroileal reflex, it is mediated by the autonomic nervous system and possibly by the gastrin. Okay, when there is the presence of the food in the stomach, then that stimulates the peristalsis in the ileum and that causes the relaxation of the ileocecal sphincter. So, as a result, the intestinal contents are delivered to the large intestine. Right? This is the gastroileal reflex. When there is presence of food in the uh, presence of food in the stomach, there is increased peristalsis in the ileum, which leads to the delivery of the intestinal contents to the large intestine. That is gastroileal reflex. Right? There is gastropolic reflex also. Presence of food in the stomach increases the uh, mass movement in the colon which leads to the defecation, okay, which leads to the defecation. So that is gastropolic reflex. This is gastroileal reflex. Okay? Gastro means stomach, ileal means uh, the peristaltic waves occur in the ileum. Okay? Gastropolic means, gastro means stomach, polic means peristaltic waves occurs in the colon so that it can evacuate the stool. Okay? So in the gastroileal reflex, in the gastroileal reflex, um, presence of food in the stomach triggers the peristalsis in the small intestine and that leads to the delivery of the intestinal contents to the large intestine. In the gastropolic reflex, presence of, the, presence of food in the stomach leads to the contraction of the um, colon that helps in defecation reflex. So it is seen mainly in the um, children's right? because in the infants, in the infants, the uh, nervous system is not well developed. So, um, after consumption of the uh, consumption of the consumes after consumption of the um, food, then they defecate. Right? You may have seen in the um, infants at your home right? after they consume food after consumption of food after some time they will evacuate. Okay, that is the gastrocolic reflex. Okay, this is gastroileal reflex. Then migrating motor complex. So migrating motor complex, it is the motor activity that occurs from the stomach to the ileum at every regular interval of the 90 minutes, 90 to 120 minutes. Okay, 90 to 120 minutes. So uh, main function of the gastro, uh, migrating motor complex is it helps in sweeping the intestinal contents so that it can prepare for the next meal. Okay, it helps in sweeping the intestinal content, sweeping the intestinal content so that it can prepare for the next meal. So speed of MMC is five centimeter, and the hormone responsible for the migrating motor complex is motilin. Okay, hormone responsible for the migrating motor complex is motilin. So ingestion of the food, when you ingest food, then motility decreases and there is a stop, a stoppage of the MMC and erythromycin binds with the uh, motility receptors and increases the motility. And the MMC, it has three phases, phase one, phase two and phase three. In phase one, there is irregular spikes, uh, no spikes and no contraction. Okay, in phase one, there is no spikes and no contraction. In phase two, there is irregular spikes and irregular contractions. Okay, there is irregular spike and irregular contraction. In phase three, there is 
regular spikes and regular contraction. Right? So it it occurs in the it occurs when the stomach is empty. Okay, it occurs in the empty stomach and it helps in uh, sweeping the intestinal content. Okay, so that it can prepare for the next meal. Then there is the peristaltic rush. Okay, there is the peristaltic rush. So when there is any irritation of the mucous membrane, intestinal mucous membrane, such as in case of in infectious di diarrhea, then the powerful and rapid peristaltic contraction occurs. Okay, powerful and rapid peri peristaltic, peristaltic wave of contraction occurs, which is known as the peristaltic rush. Okay, so, <clears throat> so it is partly uh, initiated partly by the nervous reflex, uh, that involves the autonomic nervous system and brain, and it is um, also affected by the myotonic okay? plexus. And this helps in sweeping the intestinal contents to the intestine and colon, and thereby relieving the irritated time from the um, intestine. Okay, it helps in relieving the intestinal time from the intestine, irritating time from the intestine. Intestine. Then large intestinal motility. A large intestinal motility. So, two types of motility occurs in the large intestine. One is the hostration, second is the mass movement. Okay, hostration and mass movement. In small intestine, two types of motility occurs. A three type of motility occurs. One is the segmentation contraction, second is the peristalsis, third is the third is the migrating motor complex. In large intestine, two types of motility occurs. One is the segmentation contraction or hostration. Second is the mass movement. Okay, second is the mass movement. So the fecal material they move from the cecum to the colon. Okay, uh, then to the rectum, then to the anal canal. Or the hostra or sac-like segments appear after contraction of the large intestine. So cecum in cecum and proximal colon, <coughs> in cecum and proximal colon, when the proximal colon is distended with the fecal material, the ileocecal sphincters contract and there is prevention of reflux into the ileum. Okay, there is prevention of reflux into the ileum. So, segmentation contraction, segmentation contraction in the proximal colon, it helps in mixing the contents and they are responsible for the appearance of the ostra. Okay, uh, the mass movement, it occurs one to three times per day and it causes the colonic uh, movements, colonic contents, to move distal against the long distance. In distal colon, uh, most of the colonic absorption occurs and pro, uh, in the proximal colon. So fecal material, it resides in the distal colon and it moves slowly to the, uh, it moves slowly to, slowly to the distal segments, okay? So mass movement, it helps in propelling the uh, semi-solid particles into the rectum, right? So this is the, Section. Uh, this is the figure of the large intestine. So it has the cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, then rectum. So mixing movements of the colon or hostration, okay, segmentation contraction or hostration. So like the segmentation movement, like segmentation movement occurs in the uh, small intestine, Large circular constriction also occurs in the large large intestine. Okay, movement also occurs in the large intestine, and these constrictions they occur at every 2.5 centimeters. Okay, they occur at every 2.5 centimeters, and these um, contraction they can sometimes occlude the entire colon. Okay, they can sometimes occlude the entire colon. So this contraction of the colon it is due to the layer of the longitudinal strips of the muscles known as the tinea coli, okay? So this combined contraction of the lo uh, longitudinal and circular smooth muscles causes the unstimulated uh, portion of the large intestine to bulge out into the bag-like sacs, which is known as prostration, okay? The contraction, alternate contraction uh, and relaxation of longitudinal and circular muscle it helps in bulging out the intestinal, uh, large intestine outwards into the back like sacs, which is known as ostracens. So this part, at every regular 2.5 centimeter, there is the contraction of longitudinal and circular muscles, which leads to the uh, bulging of the 
pollen into the bag like secretion, bag like sacs, which is known as ostracens. So these are the ostracens. Right? These are the ostracens. So the ostracens, they reach the peak intensity about 30 seconds, then they disappear during the next 60 seconds. Okay, they reach the peak intensity about each about 30 seconds and they disappear during the next 60 seconds. And it also helps in moving slowly the um, contents into the anus, okay, contents towards the anus. Right? They slightly propel food um, particles into the forward direction. Right? They slightly propel food particles into the forward direction. Then there is mass peristalsis or propulsive movement, mass movement or mass peristalsis or propulsive movement. Second type of contraction is the propulsive movement or mass movement. Right? First type of contraction of the large intestine is the ostracion. Second type is the mass movement. So mass movement, it helps in uh, emptying the colon. Okay, it helps in emptying the colon and it helps in propelling food into the uh, rectum. Okay, it helps in propelling the contents into the pollenic contents into the rectum. So much of the propulsion of the cecum, much of the propulsion of the cecum and ascending colon results from the slow but persistent hostile contraction. Uh, it takes about 8 to 15 hours to move the chyme from the elliptical valve to the colon. Okay, from the elliptical valve to the rectum, it takes about 8 to 15 hours. Okay, from the cecum to the rectum, the mass movement can uh, for many minutes at a time take over the propulsive role. Okay, from the segment colon, it, uh, its, its frequency greatly increases. Okay, so this type of movement, it occurs uh, one to three times a day. Right, mass movement, it occurs one to three times a day. And its function is to empty the colonic contents to the, empty the colonic contents to the, uh, segment colon and rectum. So the meeting is about to be over. Right? So this is the figure of the mass movement. So from here, so at 7 a.m. you have taken, so at 12 noon, after three to five hours, it will reach into the cecum and it takes about eight to 15 hours to reach into the rectum, okay? And this sometimes, this movement, it is totally occluded. Right? Sometimes it is totally occluded. Sometimes it is totally occluded. It is occluding and it is propelling the contents. Okay, it is propelling the contents towards the rectum. Right? It is propelling the contents towards the rectum. In the stomach, it initiates the contraction of the colon. That is the gastrocolic reflex or duodenocolic reflex. Right? If the food is if the food is in the stomach, then gastrocolic reflex. If chyme comes in the duodenum, it is duodenocolic reflex. It is mainly due to the this reflex is mainly due to the autonomic nervous system. Okay. This reflex is mainly due to the autonomic nervous system. So irritation of the colon can initiate sometimes it can initiate the um, aggressive movement, okay, intense mass movement or aggressive movement. So if there is ulcerative colitis, then the frequency of mass movement, it persists for all the time. And if there is um, ulcerative colitis, then the frequency of the mass movement, it persists almost all the time. And it persists almost all the time. So today we have we studied the types of contraction, you know, types of motility in the small and large intestine, you know, in the small and large intestine. So small intestine have three types of motility. One is, what is one? Segmentation contraction. Second is peristaltic contraction. Third is migrating motor complex. Hey, third is migrating motor complex. The large intestine have two types of motility. One is ostracion. Second is mass peristalsis, right? One is frustration, second is mass peristalsis. So uh, I want to stop it here today, okay? In next class, we'll be talking about the defecation, then about the, then about the vomiting, and then about the 
GI hormones and will be finishing of the will be finishing of the gastrointestinal system. Okay? GI system will be finished. 